Today's video is going to focus on more rhythm problems of the heart. The most common complaint that we hear from patients when it comes to this is palpitations. And palpitations can be a variety of symptoms. Some patients say their heart beats too fast. Some patients report that it beats irregularly. Some notice skip beats. Some notice very hard heartbeats. But the question is what's causing their symptoms? It's not always the heart that causes the symptoms. Sometimes we have monitors on patients, they reproduce their symptoms and their heart rhythm is completely normal. But if it is a heart related issue, the question is what's causing the patient's symptoms? And the only real way to record it is to have a monitor on the patient while they have their symptoms. Very often patients have symptoms, they go to the emergency room, they come to the office, they get an EKG, the EKG is normal, and the patient comes back and says, well, how could this be normal? I had symptoms half an hour ago. Well, the goal at that point would be to have an EKG machine or a monitor on them 30 minutes ago when they had their symptoms. If palpitations occur infrequently, and infrequently meaning once a month or once every two months, it's very difficult for us to give patients devices to put on their chest or to say, come to the office and get an EKG, especially if it's short lived, because that infrequent an episode our monitors don't last for that long a period of time. There are many wearables and you don't, this is not an Apple watch, but you don't need to spend $400 on an Apple watch. There's $40, $50 watches that record EKGs. EKGs are different than heart rates. Heart rate just tells us how fast the heart's going. It doesn't tell us what the actual rhythm is of the heart. But many wearables, such as watches like this, will give us an EKG. And if someone has symptoms and it's infrequent, this should be able to answer the question as to what's causing those symptoms. When physicians look at it, we look at those strips and we try to figure out what's happening. In an earlier video, I gave an overview on how the heart rhythm works. There are two upper chambers and there's two lower, lower chambers. There's a set fan of wiring in both of those chambers. In some people, their palpitations are just muscle twitches. And the muscle twitch is just when a little area of heart muscle sends out a big enough electrical signal, it'll cause the heart to contract before the metronome causes the heart to contract. And if that's in the upper chamber, it's a PAC. If it's in the lower chamber, it's a PVC. Every human being has PACs and PVCs all day. Very few people can ever feel them. If the PACs or PVCs are infrequent, that's typically normal physiology and it's very difficult to stop that from happening. If PACs or PVCs are more frequent, then the question is why is someone having this more than the general population? Then other tests will look at the heart structure and function like an ultrasound or a stress test may be indicated. In some people, through that set fan of wiring, they have a cross wire. And an easy analogy is if you take a paper clip, put it in the mouth of an outlet, don't push it in, but just leave it by the edge. If somebody walks by and the paper clip gets pushed into the outlet, you have a fuse in the house and the fuse blows, but if there was no fuse box, and you can imagine that creating a circuit through the paper clip where all of a sudden there's a very fast circuit that happens. And that can happen within the heart too. If it's in the upper chambers of the atria, Oftentimes that's what leads to atrial flutter. And atrial flutter is a rhythm where that loop creates the heart rate. And that loop is usually a heart rate of around 300 beats per minute. Somebody's heart rate that they're feeling may not be 300 beats per minute because the upper chambers or atria are going 300 beats a minute, but the switching box in the middle only allows a certain number of those impulses to get to the ventricle. And it's the ventricle that pumps blood out to the body. Other people have different short circuits. Some go around that little central switching box. And there's different names for the different ones, but we can find those oftentimes with a monitor. Other kinds of bad heart rhythms are what we call ventricular tachycardia. Ventricular tachycardia is when the bottom chambers beat very fast. Ventricular tachycardia and ventricular fibrillation can also be known as sudden death. And this is why if you're in public, if you see somebody collapse, you should look at a wall. They have boxes with a lightning bolt on it. Those are called defibrillators. The defibrillator, if placed on a person's chest, will sense to see if they have ventricular tachycardia or ventricular fibrillation. If they do, that will shock the heart. When the heart gets shocked, everything in the heart stops, and then hopefully the metronome starts up again, not that very fast heartbeat in the bottom chambers of the heart. The last rhythm, which I did not include in this video, is called atrial fibrillation. There are many details to talk about with atrial fibrillation, so I thought I would dedicate an entire video just to atrial fibrillation. 
I hope you enjoyed this video. Have a good day.